focado para resolver problemas aqui do Ibama, então, mas vamos passar para o próximo palestrante, a gente vai ter a, a mesa redonda logo na sequência, e eu chamo o nosso último palestrante, ele que vem da Itália, é Roberto Cremonini, ele é mestre em Física, já em, desde 1994, é, pela Universidade de Turim, ele trabalhou com é, é, previsão do tempo na região norte da Itália, é, é, conhecida como Piemonte. É, desde o começo, ele foi responsável por é, dois radares na banda C para previsão do tempo, é, radares climáticos, né? e em 2004 ele começou num projeto é, para o desenvolvimento do primeiro radar polarimétrico, banda X, também para é, fins climáticos. É, ele tem, é, desde 2008, é professor de meteorologia na Universidade de Turim, e é, hoje ele trabalha na Agência é, de Proteção Ambiental da região de Piemonte, é, também trabalhando com alertas é, é, de risco, de riscos climáticos, e colabora ativamente com é, outros centros de pesquisa, como a Universidade do Estado do Colorado e também a Universidade de Helsinki. Então, com vocês, meu amigo Roberto. Thank you, George. Yes, first of all, I wish to thank George for this invitation. And uh, this is the last talk of the last uh, session of the last day. <laughs> so, I wish also to thank you because I learned a lot of new things. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, I will try to use this. Yes. So, this is the outline of my talk. It will take uh, two or three hours, don't worry. <laughs> no, I know. So, I will I try to literally explain which are the contests uh, where my ordinary job runs and um, motivation, why we move to GFOS or Force 4 g technologies, and uh, I will show you two cases of uh, study. And some uh, uh, consideration to conclude. And then uh, an outline on ongoing work. Okay, I work for the Environment Regional Agency in Piemonte, but uh, inside this uh, agency I work uh, for the Department of uh, Sistemi Previsionali, that means uh, uh, forecast systems. So our duty are uh, connected to the civil protection in terms of uh, monitoring uh, current conditions related to the natural risk and to forecast. Um, our activities uh, cover atmosphere monitoring, reverse monitoring, uh, even a seismic network and so on. We work obviously 30, uh, 365 days per year and we are really operational. Uh, I want to, we also manage uh, a monitoring network, uh, meteorological, air quality, hydrological network, snow network, I don't know if uh, in Brazil <laughs> is there. And um, so we collect a lot of amount of data. So there is a, a national law that was stated in 2004 that uh, designed the, the Italian, the national uh, warning system in a term of a regional. So each region is uh, responsible for, uh, for warning people. Here, oh, I don't know if it's work. Okay, in the, in the corner, yes. Uh, okay. Ah, yes, thank you. So, so it means that uh, we are responsible for warning citizens uh, uh, daily uh, in, uh, for that uh, area. And we are also responsible for monitoring for the networks, uh, for giving information, timing in real time, reliable information. So, how our activities run? So, there is a, there are a, uh, we say initial conditions, 
that are provided by monitoring. There are forecasts, uh, NWP, so numerical weather prediction, also hydrological models. And then uh, there is a team of experts uh, guided by the responsible for uh, a week um, per month, uh, I'm the responsible, that decide the, the level of uh, warning for our region. According to these scholars, uh, obviously red uh, is, uh, means uh, high critical conditions. Yes, this is uh, an example of uh, warning that we provide. So yellow, in this case, I show this case because it's related about the, the, the case study. Um, yellow means uh, is a typical summer condition for us. That means uh, uh, pay attention, severe thunderstorms are expected. So severe thunderstorms are a little bit tricky. I will show later on why. Um, this is the network that we manage. Consider that uh, so the, the extension of, uh, of Piemont is uh, 25,000 kilometers square. So it's, it's a stamp uh, <laughs> compared to, to Brazil. Um, we have a dense network. Uh, more or less uh, we gather 10 uh, millions of measurements by ground, uh, by ground network uh, per month. And uh, also we manage uh, weather radar systems. So this is uh, our network. But we also use Earth observation for several topics. Um, for example, uh, humidity is, uh, is a key factor. The soil humidity is a key factor for hydrological uh, model. So HSAF is a facility uh, from uh, uh, MSG satellite that provides uh, information about humidity in the soil that can be used in the hydrological model to improve the, the, the flood forecast. Um, but we use also, we are also an environment agency, and we provide also some uh, uh, products uh, to our colleague related to air pollution uh, and also uh, the land use changing. Uh, yeah, this is an, a, a case. Uh, I heard a sentinel that was mentioned several times during these th three days. This uh, is a special service called the Emergency Management System by Copernicus, uh, so it means that when some emergency happens uh, in uh, Europe, uh, there is an activation of a Sentinel uh, satellite uh, that uh, acquires special, that make uh, special uh, uh, scanning of uh, the ground and provide uh, timely information. It means uh, one or two days later. This is a case where, uh, where we, we got uh, a lot of uh, rainfall uh, and uh, there was uh, a landslide that uh, uh, that killed a, a person. And uh, what is uh, interesting is that uh, timely we can have uh, a picture even of landslide of a landslide in a remote place, for example, where we couldn't get uh, without sending people on the ground. That is very expensive. So. Huge amount of data, information. Even a scientific investigation needs. So we want to improve uh, daily by day. And uh, we are public administration, cost reduction is uh, <laughs> our Bible. <laughs> and um, so we are technician, we are good programmers, but we are not very, very nerdy programmers. <laughs> so, and uh, so there are Bible about uh, the best way to develop software, but uh, then it's impossible to maintain them. <laughs> At least for us, only expert can do this. So solution, free software. <laughs> there is a community, there is a web, there is people that can help you. And uh, so this is uh, our approach. I will show you an, uh, a couple of cases. Thunderstorm, as I mentioned before, is um, a weather perturbation that lasts uh, at least uh, one hour. Okay, you can have uh, hail, tornadoes, lightnings, or whatever. So it's uh, it's very dangerous, 
And uh, the, the main problem is that uh, we are able to say, okay, tomorrow thunderstorm, but we, know we are not able to say where and when. So we need uh, real-time application models, observation, and real-time warning. Our time scale is uh, five minutes. Here you will see some different uh, application of uh, GIS technology. I would say three GIS technologies. So we get data every five minutes. Uh, we elaborated and we issue warning every five minutes. So data are uh, uh, rapidly changing. So we develop a system, a WebGIS, uh, and uh, it's, it's not only a WebGIS. Uh, uh, I will be clear later. So th those are uh, tools that we use, uh, open so source that we use uh, to develop it. What we do? From weather radar observation, we get, uh, we identify the storm, we classify the storm, and we make an casting for the next hour. What's, uh, you could say, okay, nothing interesting. What is interesting is that uh, part of the logic is performed by Postgres, PostGIS. So when you see, for example, uh, when you see this, uh, that is the forecast uh, expected the displacement of the thunderstorm in the next hour, this uh, is done by the database <laughs> with the algorithm, function, whatever, logic, but is performed at a database level. Even the storm classification. So there is a, a st there are several studies we made, we classified, but the classification is performed by the Postgres Postgres. So this is the interesting things. So the database is not only the place where to put data, but is also the place where to analyze data and provide a new product. Obviously, Postgres, uh, Oracle, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I will be able to do this. So here, here you can see the storm that performed this, uh, this path. Here there are several variables, so several storm parameters that can help a uh, technician that uh, is responsible for the monitoring to uh, gather information and to warn when something happens. Uh, is it only for expert people? We will say later. Oh, this is another example. Okay, this is the, this is a storm. This is uh, time by time. Sorry for the, the small numbers. Uh, this is uh, uh, more or less, here was uh, 2 p.m. and here was uh, 3 p.m. So in less than one hour, one hour, he moves from here to here. Obviously red, immediately you can understand that it was a, a, a very severe storm with the hailstorm. The, uh, the cross are lightnings. So, uh, and this was the path forecasted uh, at each step. So, indeed, uh, with these uh, tools, uh, we can warn people at least one hour before something wrong happens. So this cool. But uh, have we one hour to warn them? Oh, we can send a letter communicate to them. <laughs> no, 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 no. So the idea is to, sorry, here something is missing, uh, but I, I will explain. So the idea is to make an automatic warning system based on the algorithm that I described before. Every five minutes, we get our data from the weather radar and we provide warning by Twitter, by an app, and so on, to the citizens. So this is another aspect, involvement of, of the citizens in our products, our services. So this is the app we develop, and uh, nowadays it's limited to the, our region, but uh, we have an agreement we have a, with our national department of civil protection, and in the next year we'll be uh, extended to the entire country. So uh, here are numbers uh, of people who download uh, this app uh, for, for us. Uh, in, in Piemonte, uh, five million people lives. Okay, to give you, to give you a number. 
and uh, those are the number of uh, active warnings. So it means uh, that uh, when there is a storm, your mobile sounds and uh, you say, oh, a severe storm is, uh, is in coming. Okay, other topics. It seems not related to topics in Brazil, I think, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, I will show you later the connection. So we are also responsible for the avalanche uh, risk evalu evaluation daily, based on the daily basis. And um, oh, here you can see, this was in the 2008, uh, this is a road, uh, or this was a road <laughs> now. Uh, and this is, was a, a, an avalanche, okay. And this is a colleague of, a colleague of mine, because uh, for the snow, not only the snow depth is the, is the main parameter, but uh, you have also to go in field and to make several measurements. And uh, this is what he is doing. So you, you have to understand the stability of the layer, uh, density of the snow, and so on. Okay. So people is looking for avalanche. Oh, there is an avalanche there. Or some uh, technician that uh, are not uh, in the our organization can do, because they are training, trained, they can do these measurements, for example, that I, I described before. So the idea is crowdsourcing. So to use something to gather information from people and experts people. So we look at uh, Ushaidi and uh, we, we develop uh, we get it uh, because it seems, uh, it seems the, to be the most uh, flexible tool to do this job. And we also, we develop it uh, a little bit. So here you can see some requirements, some technical stuff. I don't uh, uh, explain any more about this. But uh, this is our experience from uh, 2012. So we gather uh, 580 surveys now. That means uh, a huge amount of measure related to snow depth, density, uh, some trial uh, resistance, and so on. And uh, we also collected some uh, more than 2,000 reports, uh, reports of avalanche. So people that was uh, tracking or was uh, was in the mountains, I say, oh, there I saw an avalanche. So this is uh, useful because if uh, an avalanche happens, uh, it can re-happen. <laughs> so th the story is relevant. So this was the original, the default uh, interface, uh, and we specialize it. Yeah, We specialize it uh, adding uh, teams adding several stuff and uh, I will show how much complicated it is. Because there is a special communication standard for uh, snow measurements. Uh, and so we have to uh, interface uh, this uh, special communication uh, with, the, with the interface by ID. And it, it works. So this is the, the, the form of all measurements taken by uh, uh, an expert uh, technician uh, about uh, the snow status. We make also other experiments with the uh, Ushaidi. Uh, one, some information that are missing to us are, for example, tornado occurrence, hailstorm occurrence, uh, because they are so localized that it's uh, difficult to, to measure them. It's, uh, it's difficult to have a ground truth. So we try to involve citizens uh, to gather information from them. Uh, like uh, in, in form of test, news, or uh, video, or photo. So this is uh, an interesting experience. Uh, what we learn about uh, Ushraidi? Yes, uh, here you can see that uh, free plugins can extend capabilities. Uh, we can choose in base layer, creating trigger, make an alert when we get new information. So there are several features that are interesting. Uh, 
what's, uh, what's drawbacks? <laughs> so at the origin, it was only uh, based on MySQL. Why do we, we like to use Postgres? Postgres. Uh, the modify customized interface is very crappy, uh, so it need uh, need to be very skilled. So this uh, this is uh, for us is a li little bit uh, uh, drawbacks, and uh, also we correct uh, yes uh, we correct also some bugs. Uh, summarizing this experience uh, is that if you want uh, fastly to set up a crowdsourcing on a team, Ushoid is good. If you want to specialize, you need a special interface and some special feature, yeah, you, you could think what, what is cost effective. If develop a, a simple PHP interface by yourself or, or something different. Uh, generally speaking, what we learn from uh, our experience in uh, GeForce uh, uh, use. So some point of strength, obviously cost reduction, uh, easy and uh, rapid uh, development, uh, and the help like a community. When you don't uh, know something, you type uh, on the web and you get an answer. <laughs> Weakness. Oh, too much updates. Uh, sometimes, w when you start from scratch, is uh, easy. But when you have, uh, when you are operational and you have to maintain an update, uh, especially if the, there is no reverse compatibility, it became a, a big mess. Um, some open source project uh, lives uh, shortly, <laughs> so you you beat on them and then they disappear. So <laughs> that's not a good news. <laughs> and uh, so I would say that the initial uh, choices are very hard. So when you have to choose, oh, I do this in this way, I use uh, one, two, three. Uh, this could be easy. Uh, next future on uh, this is my perspective, so from the natural risk, weather, uh, environment, uh, hydrological, and so on. So, I think that in the next years uh, there will be new sensor, remote sensor, both remote and ground sensor. Even low cost sensor, that means uh, sensor that will be spread in your country and that produce uh, a large amount of data. <laughs> so a huge amount of information for us. So, uh, so we need uh, communication and working. networking will be a critical point. Uh, cloud computing, because uh, oh, nobody is able to have uh, enough uh, computing uh, power to elaborate this. Uh, obviously big data, but I want to spend uh, some words about crowdsourcing. In, uh, in, uh, in, at least in Italy, there is a need to involve more citizens, to make citizens more close to the public administration. So it's a sort of a collaborative model where citizens can provide information and you provide information directly, easily, to, uh, in a friend's way to the citizens. I think, uh, I don't know here, but in, in, in Italy is a, is a key point. Ongoing work, so huge amount of data, different sources, then data fusion. So algorithms that uh, are able to squeeze data to extract information. Uh, we are a little bit far from this. Uh, from uh, my point of view of my service, uh, we want to improve now casting algorithm, extend the warning uh, to the citizens uh, uh, using different channels and uh, on the basis of uh, different information. And also we want to extend our uh, data availability by WebRTS services. Um, on Monday, I visit um, the cathedral here in Basilica. And uh, when I was uh, inside, 
I look at something familiar. So I want to uh, conclude my talk uh, uh, with this. Uh, obrigado. Muito obrigado, Roberto. Impressionante esse volume de dados com que vocês trabalham, dados a cada cinco minutos, é, num volume desse tamanho. E, e essa visão também de cada cidadão como um sensor. né? Na verdade, a gente tem seres sensores, que são nossos olhos, ouvidos, nossa percepção, e, e fazer com que o governo é, é, tenha uma ferramenta para coletar isso, seja via máquina fotográfica, um gravador, é algo que realmente é, é o caminho do futuro.